Hello and welcome to a new video about non-feedback controls. Last time we talked about that we can realize controls in a very different way. Yeah? This time we talk about the first realization. We know this first version pretty well because we're talking about fluid technique, pneumatic or hydraulic realization of control tasks. So this is mainly mainly an overview because there are separate video series about pneumatics and hydraulics. Yeah? If you're deeply interested in this part, watch them. Yeah? There we go into details of these controls. Yeah? Just to, to make it clear, yeah? usually we have power supply elements, usually we have signal input elements, we have process elements, we have output elements and we have working elements. Yeah? Just to summarize them, su summarize them in, in a pneumatic way, yeah? so, so there is a power supply, Not 100% satisfied, but okay. So there is a power supply. Then there are input elements. There are process elements. There are output elements. And there are working elements. Why have I drawn it that way? Because usually we said in a pneumatic or hydraulic scheme, we do it from the bottom to the top in this order. Power supply, input elements, processing elements, output elements, working elements. Working elements are at the top. Okay. So we're talking about pneumatic or hydraulic. What are typical working elements? Wow, yeah. cylinders. Cylinders, typical working element, double acting, single acting. However, there are also motors, yeah. air motors, hydro motors, yeah. and in air there are also turbines. These are the working elements. Output elements, typical output elements are wave valves. There is hardly more yeah? wave valves. So I need a, I don't know, a single acting cylinder needs a 3-2 wave valve. A double acting cylinder needs a 4-2 wave valve or 5-2 wave valve, depending a little bit if it's in pneumatic usually it's 5-2, in hydraulic usually it's 4-2. So, wave valves. Big enough, big wave valves, big enough to control the working element. Okay. Then there are processing, element, processing elements. This may, might also be wave valves. This might be shuttle valves. Two pressure valves. Pressure control valves, check valves, non-return valves, processing element, doing the logic, yeah? realizing the logic. They are usually smaller, yeah? tinier, and whatever is the outcome will then switch. Usually, if it's a pure pneumatic or hydraulic control, they will switch the wave valve, which is 
operated primatically or hydraulically and boom, the cylinder does its job. Huh? Processing elements. Input elements, yeah, lever valves, push valves with a push button. Some air barrier, something like this. Yeah. Input elements, checking if something is there or not, let it push, valves with special extensions yeah, that it can be switched simply. Input elements. Power supply, we have here, chromatic, we have. We have, uh, uh, we have pumps, hydraulic yeah, pumps, then also in power supply there is accumulators, yeah. then there is uh, cleaners, oilers, coolers, everything which is necessary that we have power. Okay? These are the systems or these are the things yeah, in a pneumatic or hydraulic control system. And like I said, we talked about those things pretty hard. Yeah? So I will just, I just want to mention, we did already control without feedback yeah? and without really knowing that this was controlled. Yeah. It fits to this topic. Okay. Pneumatic or hydraulic controls. They're still there. Yeah. It's not just, it's not, yeah, okay, nowadays we do it with PLCs and so on, and this is just old, old technology. No, I already mentioned last time, yeah, there are things which are controlled by pure hydraulic control for or pneumatic control. What, for instance, should happen if there is too low pressure in the system? Yeah? There is usually a pressure valve with, which will then switch if the pressure is dropping be, beyond a certain threshold and then shutting down in a safe way, shutting down the system yeah? or blocking or whatever is necessary to keep it safe. Yeah? If we not have the force to operate it, bring it to a safe state. This is usually done in pure, pure pneumatic or hydraulic controls, yeah? because simply it is working, yeah? especially if there are accumulators inside. Yeah? Or, for instance, uh, in a hydropower plant, yeah? there, is, there is a speed watching element. Yeah? It's nothing less than, it's, it's held back by a spring, and if the rotation of the shaft is getting too high, the, the, the spring is, is, is extended by some, some weight. Yeah? And the, if the weight goes out enough, yeah, it will touch a lever valve and the lever valve will, will switch down the unit. Okay? Overspeed device. Mechanical overspeed device protection. Okay? Because if we reach this level, something else in the control is already false. It yeah? does not work anymore. So there are subcontrols usually which are working that way. And there is a reason for that. Usually it's security and redundancy to keep it safe even if a more sophisticated control approach is failing. And there are really sophisticated pragmatic and hydraulic control systems there also. Because if you make it this more complex, these pneumatic and hydraulic control systems, you end up maybe in a situation, you know, then the tiny things get important. Switching times and so on, pressure peaks, suddenly there are small valves because you don't want to use, and small valves can be easily disturbed by a pressure peak and so on. Yeah? Here is a lot of know-how inside. Pneumatic and hydraulic valve. Controls. Yeah, like I said, should be mainly 
to mention it. And maybe have a focus that this is still there and you have your own issues if you do this. Next time we're going to talk about a new control variant for us. We're talking about electrical controls. This then will be in next video for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.